Welcome back to the news today. This is One on One. In Israel, the vote of Sephardic Jews, whose origin is in Arab countries, has been key ever since the campaigns of the 1970s. The first time the right-wing Likud party won the elections in 1977 was attributed to that Sephardic bloc that saw the ruling Labour Party as biased towards them. Still today, it's in the background of elections, this time less than two months away. And tonight with me is Dr. Ifat Biton, founder of Tmura, the Israeli Anti-Discrimination Legal Center. Dr. Biton, thanks very much for being with me. Hello. Good evening. So from the outside, maybe even from the inside, when we think of discrimination in Israel, I think a lot of people think more towards the divisions between Arab Israelis and Jewish Israelis. But within Jewish Israelis, also in Israel, along ethnic and religious lines, there are a lot of different divisions. And you've been outspoken on how those connect to politics, which is extremely relevant right now. How do you see those as playing a role in the Israeli political system? So first of all, I'll start with a starting point, which is that this is something that is not at all known, um, it, you know, outside the boundaries of Israel, but also inside Israel. You opened your um, uh, remarks saying that, you know, Sephardic Jews used to have a lot of influence and they are uh, a key, um, um, they play a key role in, in establishing the uh, um, political, uh, political situation in Israel. But this is something that is completely not discussed um, when we get to, to uh, thinking about politics in Israel. Only recently, mm -hmm. um, another uh, uh, poll was taken as to their influence on the how Sephardic the political, influence. yeah, the Sephardic influence, um, how it has been played out after 77, when you look at some of the parties that were um, really, uh, you know, at government, government such as uh, uh, Kadima, for example, uh, I don't know how to say it, it's like Kadima. It used to be uh, Ariel Sharon's kind of party. Forth. Yeah, going forth, uh, Sh uh, Ariel Sharon's the party. party yeah, and they, they won like uh, 29, 40 at first, at the first elections, and then 29 um, uh, votes. And, and they used to be such an amazing uh, party and uh, in, in terms of their uh, governance uh, power. And once, eventually, uh, the Sephardic, a Sephardic candidate was able to overcome a, an Ashkenazi candidate mm -hmm. in this uh, party, fun. yes, uh, through the primaries. Actually, they, they, she, she left after that, and, and they lost, they almost completely lost in the next elections. They won only two votes, and, and, and the poll uh, indicated that only 4% of Ashkenazi voters of that party voted to that candidate so for the same you party, the these... same, you know, politics, right. the same ideas of... So looking at maybe the evolution of that, if we see most of the polls tend to show that Sephardic voters would support the Likud in past years, at least, the, the more right-wing Likud party. But yet the Likud hasn't had a, a, a Sephardic leader, whereas the Labor Party, on the other hand, has had a couple of them. How do you explain that twice? Uh, well, it's very complicated, because also when you look at, you know, at these leaders, Sephardic leaders in the, in the Labor Party in Israel, they weren't very successful, and they were not the leading the party. Yes, they were not leading the party, mm -hmm. the party through election times, um, and they lost on their next next uh, chair uh, term. So there's no sense of, of Emil Pellets did sort of lead during election times. Yeah, so but, for him, for the for yeah, the yeah, but then he but then he lost. So this the, the sense it doesn't is, stick exactly. It doesn't stick, and also Why when Peres and when Peres lost to Amir Peretz, again, we see the same uh, pattern of behavior, leaving his, so his mother party to, to um, you know, to join Sharon. So you can say, okay, there was, you know, a, a feeling that this is the right thing to do for everybody to, ga to gather around Sharon. But at the same time, you see a pattern here. Once the Sephardic leaders manage to mm -hmm. climb up the ladder to, to lead the, the there's party, a, a there's, of sorts. there's a flight. There's a flight. So do you attribute that to discrimination, to a problem from within that sector of society, or, or both? What, why, what's the reason behind that? I think that, you know, uh, again, as the numbers indicate, also with Peres and Peretz, you could see that in most of the kibbutzim, where you have mainly uh, Ashkenazi uh, um, communities, Peres won 68% of them of their votes, whereas Peretz used to be himself a 
you know, someone who grew at a kibbutz and incorporated all of their uh, um, um, theories and ideas about about social democracy and. You know, it, it was really amazing to see how they are not willing to so accept him as one of their own. why did it never go own. further? For the Likud, for example, <coughs> which polls as recently as 2013 showed a very strong support among Sephardic uh, voters for the Likud. That's if true. you have a strong voting base but no leader, what's missing? What's the missing piece then? I think, I think like, you know, history plays a substantial role in, in these patterns of, of voting. When you look at, at uh, uh, Sephardic Jews... Uh, settled in, in under uh, privileged towns, you know, in the wilderness of Israel. You don't see that the Likud has been um, um, in governance for, I don't know, you know, grosso modo 40 years, exactly. <laughs> it's been 40 years already, almost 40 years, and nothing has been substantially changed. And so they still, you know, hold this grudge against Mapai, the old Labour Party. So this is coming back to this. Is it an internal grudge or is it an external discrimination? That's true. Which I think I, I think I think there are both. So there's yeah. a dynamic here which is very uh, complex and, and, um, and complicated. And I think, you know, uh, another thing is that in a sense, um, the Likud Party offers something more um, rooted in Jewish um, identity that resonates with the strong um, um, tendency that you can identify Is at Sephardic so cycles to, uh, you know, being in contact with their Jewish identity, uh, knowing that it's secure and, and, and it's um, safe. And when it comes to Labor Party, it feels like, you know, the, it's, it's more of the secular Zionist right. uh, uh, front. So let's of, go to another, to, to sort of stay current, another one of what came to be, I don't want to call it a scandal, but maybe a fiasco of this current uh, election cycle where uh, former football star Eli Ohana joined the Jewish Home Party. There was a sort of uproar about it, a lot of criticism, and left. How do you explain that? Do you see that as, uh, was it right for him to join, for Naftali Bennett to, to accept him in there? Was it let's talk wrong with, for him to leave? So let's start with Naftali Bennett. Was that the right thing to do? So as far as he's concerned, you know, Bennett, he, he just couldn't understand what the whole hustle is about. Like, he did the right thing. The right thing, as far as he's concerned, is to, to bring in someone who will represent a segment of society that is traditionally neglected and definitely within the, uh, um, the uh, uh, you know, secular Zionist uh, uh, national group of people. Is there a by the sort of the settlement movement, the, the far-right settlement movement there? Definitely. Definitely. As someone who's coming from a family who made the, the shift from, you know, an underprivileged town to a settlement, as by the way, as one of the reasons is was definitely, um, you know, getting to to some kind of of, uh, of welfare type of welfare state that the, that was there much more than uh, the sh the government showed or presented in uh, in the the uh, the underprivileged towns. So there, the rejection was very very dramatic. It was very sh very clear that this is an elitist society. I grew up, you know, studying in their educational system. It's a highly segregated and, and, and discriminatory system. Because we don't have a lot of time, I want to take you then from this, which obviously very, very deeply ingrained problems here, and Israel has no short of, uh, shortage of issues to deal with, to resolve these internal divisions just within the Israeli Jewish society in the short time we have left. What needs to be done? Whose responsibility is it? I'll tell you what it is. What needs to be done is not to, you know, um, uh, assign all kind of little presents, little uh, political spaces for women, not just for uh, Sephardic Jews, women, Sephardic Jews, Ethiopian Jews, who have only one representative in an, as of now, non-realistic, uh, um, uh, you know, position mm -hmm. in Yesh Atid. This is just... Um, a shame. It's so not I think it's not enough. It's not in, even enough to put representatives. What we do want and what we ask for is to have some kind of partnership. A On means that, that will show us, you know, that that we're part of something that's happening. The solution happening. will take a, a much longer answer, I'm sure, but partnership is a good place to start. Dr. Ifat Biton, thanks very much for this. Thank and you. thank you, our viewers, for being with us. Find us back here next Sunday.